My name is Scott Malcolmson. I'm Director of Communications at International Crisis Group, talking with Piers Pigou and Trevor Mysiri, who are Piers is the Project Director for Southern Africa, and Trevor Mysiri is the Senior Analyst, both joining us from Johannesburg. They've just completed work on a report on election scenarios in Zimbabwe. Uh, I might start start with you, Piers. The, uh, the global political agreement that came about following violence in uh, 2008 in Zimbabwe was meant to lead to a peaceful political process with President Robert Mugabe of the ZANU-PF party uh, continuing as president and Morgan Changirai of, of the Movement for Democratic Change as prime minister. Uh, there is a deadline for elections coming up. Uh, the government under, well, President Mugabe's side wants it to be in June. Uh, that seems like it'll be delayed. Could you explain to us just briefly uh, what the the nature of the crisis is politically between these two parties over the question of whether and when to hold an election. The uh, election date remains a site of contestation uh, along with uh, many other uh, problems in Zimbabwe. As you've indicated, uh, ZANU-PF is calling for an early election. Uh, this is for a number of reasons, not least because the presidential candidate is 89 years old uh, and they are concerned that the longer the election process is delayed, uh, the less likely he is able to mount a vigorous campaign for the election. Uh, most people are expecting this to be a relatively close run uh, election and uh, the ZANU-PF's political fortunes have uh, recovered somewhat uh, under the auspices of the Government of National Unity, the inclusive government that came out of the global political agreement. Uh, the MDC uh, formations, both of them, have been calling for a set of reforms uh, to be put in place that relate essentially to media and se the security sector and the reconciliation of existing laws with the new constitution that has been adopted. And uh, as we speak, uh, this matter is being discussed uh, in Zimbabwe's Senate at the moment and is expected to come into law during the course of the next couple of weeks. Uh, so there's a major contestation over what reforms are still required uh, before an election can proceed, with uh, those arguing for reforms opting for a longer uh, range view, arguing for elections uh, around August, September, possibly even October, the last uh, uh, constitutional, uh, constitutionally the last date is going to be the end of October, around the 28th of October uh, for an election. Although there is still an option for a further constitutional amendment which could postpone elections further. And in terms of the violence in 2008, we have a short video here that gives, uh, gives a feeling for just how severe that was. <laughs> Sagapanda how much popular enthusiasm is there within Zimbabwe for an election? I mean, the you know the violence in 2008 was was extremely dramatic, um, and it wasn't that long ago. Uh, wh while in terms of the political agreement, it's obvious that there should be an, an election because it's been agreed to, but at, at the popular level, is, is there a lot of enthusiasm for it? It's difficult to say. Uh, we've just had a, a constitutional referendum in which, uh, if the figures are to be believed, the, the biggest turnout ever in a Zimbabwean election occurred. Uh, over 3.3 million people, uh, we are told, voted. Uh, in this referendum, which displays uh, a remarkable uh, increase in participation. Almost a million more people participated 
uh, in the referendum than in the 2008 elections. Now, of course, there was a different criteria uh, in the election processes where you have to be registered uh, on the voters' roll. This is not necessary in the referendum process. But it's an indicator, uh, if indeed it is true, and there are some questions about the veracity uh, of that turnout, around the turnout, uh, but it could well be an indicator of a hunger amongst a number of people in Zimbabwe to vote. But having said that, I should point out that 3.3 million people is still probably uh, only around 50 to 55 percent uh, of the total number of eligible voters uh, in the country. We, we don't know, actually. I mean, and this is one of the problems that we have in Zimbabwe is that there is not detail on how many adults there are in the country, despite a recent census process, and we still do not have access to the latest version of the voters' roll, despite a cabinet uh, directive to that effect almost a month ago. Speaking of uh, numbers that are hard to find, um, the, you spoke earlier uh, about the movement for democratic change that has two factions. Uh, one of which, the one associated with uh, Prime Minister um, uh, Trangirai, is considerably larger, uh, but at least according to some reports, which you have mentioned in your report, uh, that some of the support for that uh, MDC dominant faction is, uh, is declining. Is there, is, is, is there any way really to, really to know what the relative strengths of the differ, different political factions are in terms of an eventual uh, uh, election result? One of the problems with the material that's available in terms of opinion polls, uh, uh, and we've seen this for a number of years over the last uh, uh, decade in Zimbabwe, and uh, in particular since the government of national unity was put in place, is that a significant chunk of all uh, opinion polls, somewhere between 40 and 50 percent uh, in some of the polls, refuse or are unable to tell you what their election preferences are. So what we can say is that over support for the MDC has declined significantly uh, from almost 60% in 2009 uh, to under 30% uh, in uh, 2012. Where, whereas conversely, ZANU-PF's over support, people prepared to put their name next to ZANU-PF, has risen in the same period from 9% to over 30%. So we've seen uh, varying fortunes as it relates to people willing to put their head out and say what they would vote for. But we still have this enormous chunk of people who are not prepared to put their, uh, uh, are not prepared to disclose who they would vote for. This, Scott, I should point out, uh, reflects the politics of fear uh, in uh, the Zimbabwean context in which people fear uh, that uh, this kind of information, these are polls that are run by non-governmental organizations, but one of the questions that is asked in these polls is who do you think is running these opinion polls? And most people think that this is some kind of government initiative, a political initiative that is there to out them. When you spoke about the politics of fear, let's look now at a short video from last year on that very point. Kuno guta intaka garasa kana kafanya kuadi na anya hunure. Pani pasi sina asi, pani pasi sina guta guta na maning. Kana guti kupopote zana kana guti amirishonga. Pani pasi sina tayisho tisanya rara. Sino sinenge sana guta ngisa shikari. Izinda usi wona guti ndezo matongo wenye kasha yusha yusha kiti kasi. Could you talk a little bit about the South African aspect of this in terms of? Regional diplomacy and and the Southern African Development Committee, which was meant to is meant to play a key uh, diplomatic role in ensuring uh, political progress in Zimbabwe. Where where is that now? Is that stalled or is that moving forward? What what you realize is that uh, South Africa has been involved at two levels. The first level was uh, the initiation of the global political agreement, which was mediated by the SADC through South Africa. And now uh, South Africa is playing another role, which is to facilitate the implementation uh, of uh, the global political agreement until we see uh, what is considered to be a credible election. But however, in as much as uh, that is, there's been a lot of challenges uh, at the regional level in terms of uh, ensuring 
that the global political agreement sees its life and that the prerequisite reforms that are stated in that agreement are also realized. Is it your feeling that there's uh, much enthusiasm left within uh, SADC or the, the Southern African Development Committee for this kind of, for this kind of work? I, th I think it's a modus operandi of uh, SADC to uh, proverbially kick the can down the road. It certainly has changed its position on Zimbabwe. We see over the last two or three years a distinct hardening uh, of its position. Uh, but we must be realistic about what is going to be achieved uh, through this body in the foreseeable future. This is why we believe that SADC has really moved from a reform agenda to a containment agenda in which stability and the maintenance of stability remains paramount. And lastly, if you could just uh, talk briefly, leaving SADC aside, uh, are there other well, and bearing in mind, of course, that the UN Election Monitoring Commission was rejected, uh, are there other significant levers of international pressure, whether from the UN or from uh, other uh, major players on the continent, or is, or is again, I mean, is it is it mostly a situation where Zimbabwe is really being, uh, you know, left to work out its own really quite intractable uh, uh, political difficulties? Yeah, of course, there's been a change in terms of um, how much the international community has been involved in Zimbabwe. And uh, what we have seen is that in the last uh, three to four years, we have seen uh, SADC uh, take a frontline role uh, in um, dealing with the situation in Zimbabwe. And uh, when SADC put its foot forward to take charge of the Zimbabweans, we also realized that uh, SADC managed to convince uh, most members of the international community to work behind the SADC initiative so as to reduce the number of parallel processes that were being followed uh, in terms of trying to put pressure on the Zimbabwe case. So what you see at the moment is you see a reconfiguration where SADC is uh, the, in, the form, in the forefront of um, pushing the Zimbabwe case and a lot of the international community players are um, sort of like either working behind SADC or are in a muted form. But however of concern uh, to, to, to us uh, is the situation whereby we are starting to see a lot of compromises around positions that were taken uh, earlier on by members of the international community to try and bring about uh, prospects for democratic transition in Zimbabwe. Here's Bigu and Trevor Myseri in Johannesburg. Thank you very much.